<sighs> data this, data that. What does data say about your classroom? Last time I checked, I was teaching human beings and not startup companies in Silicon Valley. Now, the above opener is humor identifying the dialogue of districts today versus how the teachers feel about their classrooms. But for a second, let's set school aside. When I left in 2019 to work at a tech job for a design company, I noticed that many industries began to adopt the San Francisco language of remote working in 2020 during a pandemic. It was, it was this commodification of everything's going remote. You want some food? Screw that dining experience. Uber eats your meal right to your doorstep. It's too dangerous to go outside. Soon we began to hear it with the school systems and boy, <laughs> did we suffer. Now, what does that have to do with what we're discussing today in regards to school data? Now, here's the correlation. Just like the language and trend of remote work belongs to Silicon Valley tech industry when discussing cubicle jobs and laptop abilities, so does the data analysis when it comes to looking to see how a company can perform better, examining numbers, statistics, and trends in text. It's a business approach, if you will, the San Francisco in the things or Silicon Valley in of all industries. From the work from home trend to the way that technology industry operates is a template that has become this one size fits all for most professions. When this is applied to the education system, it reduces the human being to a number that the teacher becomes responsible for improving or suffering dire consequences. Students are now digits on software circulated through different programs such as Eduphoria to set standardized test and placement. And we have now adopted the Silicon Valley business approach to helping our kids succeed in the classroom. I think this is where the discrepancies and disconnect lie between the teacher who wants to make a difference in the child's life and the school districts who need that public funding through the state using standardized testing as an accountability measure. When the pandemic hit, schools were met with a net negative of work from anywhere, teach from anywhere. In business, it's an approach convenient for the worker and not necessarily the customer. Yet it was a positive in a way where the troubled times show our students needing more than being faces behind the Zoom wall. They need a human connection and tactile instruction showing that it does matter. And after all, the data was skewed behind it. Getting to the meat of things, here's a more accurate question. When did data obsession really start in the school system? Let me share my anecdotal experience with you. During my 2014 year with middle school students, that's when I was introduced to a data first approach within the classroom. There would be these meetings where we would have kids name on the wall on these little index cards and what their scores were from interim testing and last year's state standards on how we would raise those scores over the years. At times it truly felt like I was in some boardroom meeting breaking down numbers for the performance of a company. And in a way, those students were their own little companies that were either bringing revenue to the campus or subtracting away from it. <laughs> you know, it's funny because it's too bad we didn't look at it from a sports standpoint where we got to decide, hey, little Timmy isn't performing well in the post. We need to trade him to another school, especially if little Timmy was a behavior issue. But, you know, wishful thinking. My experience reflects what I would hear from most current and former teachers' feelings with testing and data. And here's the overall consensus of the matter. A lot of people feel like it removes the human element from learning. And believe it or not, I'm gonna add this caveat, it removes the practicality of learning a subject because the focus switches from the reality learning to tested learning. Now, what do you mean it removes the learning from a subject? And I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna share with you what I mean. So if you're teaching summarization as an English teacher, you could miss the practicality of conversing with someone and relaying that conversation back to someone else providing an accurate summary that includes the core points and omits the unnecessary ones. That's how you can actually bridge what you're teaching in summarization to how is this useful to me in real life? And that's the overall problem with how a lot of people feel when it comes to standardized testing, infiltrating and interfering with the actual learning. Many people feel like it destroys the bridge between how a student is going to use this particular skill in this core subject to what does this look like in real life? which and yet focus on standardized testing usually doesn't translate how students learn summarization in, on paper to do so in reality. Oh, Charles got a 30 on his reading benchmark and most of the questions he missed are vocabulary based. So we need to give Charles more vocabulary questions and break them down, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it just begins to be a bit too much. Now, of course, standards alignments will differ state to state, but what all states share is converting the human student to a number because, you know, data. 
when I think about breaking down data, I switch to a technologist mode. That's where it's always been appropriate in addition to other things such as banking and dealing with financial numbers and, and the such. Even when you think about this YouTube channel, the conundrum is almost similar to this first problem in teaching because you are still making videos for human beings and not the algorithm, which is easy to get caught up in in the latter and ignore the former. You're looking to see who's watching your videos, where they're coming from, the age group, how long somebody is watching. Now looking at these things can help you become a better YouTuber, but again, just like with education, you do not want to forget the elements that appeal to human beings, then that is simply making a video that people want to watch, creating a title and thumbnail that teases the curiosity gap and tickles a person's, for better or worse, emotions. Yet and still, the algorithm can't be ignored, and if you want a shortcut when it comes to the data regarding YouTube and you're a beginner, then TubeBuddy can help you out with that. Instead of randomly making videos and just throwing spaghetti at a wall if you're a beginner, you can research the keywords with the most search volume and immediately create videos that people want to watch without wasting a lot of time. Now, TubeBuddy is going to help you reduce that learning curve so you can make the best video possible for your viewers by knowing off the jump who your audience is without all the trial and error. I'll place a discount link in a pinned comment below for you to check it out. Again, you have to understand that campuses are under a lot of pressure from the state and then from a federal level for them to perform at the highest tier. And as long as standardized testing is used as an accountability measure, data obsession is going to be necessary. You, my fine, humble teacher friend, may feel that data converts education into a business, but the truth of the matter is anytime money is involved, such as federal funding, you can't take the business aspect out of education. I I'm sorry, it's a sad reality, but it is what it is. And I learned this the hard way through my rookie year experience and talking to administrators about how education operates from a monetary standpoint over the years. In defense of student stats, it's not always about what's going into a desktop device. Data can merely be me asking a student about uh, a question in real time and depending on how they answer it, will communicate what type of help they may need in the classroom. Now, while that still is a legitimate data point, it's one that requires my involvement closely to ensure the students get the understanding they need and not from afar with teachers checking off some branch in mind's to-do list. Now, here's a plot twist that may make you possibly unsubscribe from my channel, which is totally okay. I get it, but I'm going to share this with you. I personally have no problem with data, as I like to call it, putting numbers on the board. Now, we can blame it on all the video games I played throughout my own school years, but I've learned how to still teach to the student while satisfying admin goals for state ratings and recognition. And if you follow this singular method that I've incorporated over the years in the classroom, you too can alleviate some of that pressure and stress placed on you from your superiors for you to perform.